everyone, welcome back to my channel, Bow and Arrow Tarot. Today we're going to get right into the Sagittarius Weekly Tarot Reading. All right, Sagittarius, my brothers and sisters, I'm a Sagittarius myself, so let's get right into it. We're going to pull out your three romance angel messages. This is going to be for this, uh, December 29th to January 4th, so today to next Saturday. Pull out your romance angel messages for this period, and then we'll pull out your animal spirits. <clears throat> All right, my lovely Sagittarius, let's see what you're going through this week. All right, we have new love. A new person is stirring your romantic interest. All right. Getting to know each other. All right. Revealing your innermost uh, selves to strengthen your bond and playfulness. Ah, uh, very nice, uh, Sagittarius. Definitely this week, uh, the New Year, New Year's Day, New Year's Eve sounds, feels already like a lot of Sagittarians are going to have some fun this week, and I do hope so. Uh, let's get right into it. We're going to pull out your animal spirits. See what kind of animal spirits you're working with this week. Now, animal spirits can come in the form of energies that are becoming available to you. Individual characteristics or personality type, uh, types of people that you're dealing with. Or stages and paths in your life, right? That are coming, that you're about to enter into or perhaps even exit out of. All right, let's see. Straight out, we have the vulture. All right, nothing is wasted, right? Tarantula, wow. Strong fire energy, air energy. And the camel, wow. Sagittarius, camel is very strong energy right up your alley. I love the camel. Let's get right into it. You're gonna know exactly why in a minute. First of all, the vulture. The vulture talks about um, not wasting anything in life, right? The vulture oftentimes has to do a lot of dirty work that nobody else, no other animals are willing to do. Cleaning up the mess, right? Cleaning up the old, transmuting the old, the dead, the decaying into the new, right? Transmuting it into something new, something positive. Um, you know, the vulture is very, very maligned, right? Because it's not a very attractive animal, right? It's an air element, of course, but um, the thing with the vulture, though, is that we, you know, it reminds us that even the difficult times in life, even the, the dirty bits, the gross bits, you know, the unpleasantness, you know, the negativity that you may go through, all of it still has value, you know. There's still value in everything, and the value oftentimes when you're dealing with, uh, with pain, <clears throat> right, it's all forms of pain, is really a, a learning process, right? You learn something from these times. And so some of you Sagittarians who have perhaps recently had a very difficult way to go, you might have had a difficult time in love. You may have even had a difficult time in sort of um, your career or your, you know, just in general. It might have been some ups and downs you're going through. But um, they were they served a purpose, right? And they were really necessary for you perhaps to learn a particular lesson, right? Drive it home. Maybe it's the same lesson you've learned before, but now it's really driven home. Um, and in this way, it's a really excellent sort of card to have, energy to have when we are really uh, clearing out all of the leftovers, all of the old shit that's left over and really transmuting all of it so that you can move forward and certainly this week moving into 2020 that you can move into 2020 with a real freshness and almost a fertility as well because we know that you know you fertilize for new growth by transmuting old and decaying things right into that fertilizer in a way so it's like you're almost fertilizing the ground of your new life by really transmuting and learning the lessons that you needed to learn from this most recent period or this period this week, right? I'm going to say tarantula energy, fire energy coming in. And the tarantula is a strong card and it is associated with crossroads, right? Some of you Sagittarius are at a crossroads. You are this week making a huge decision or even if it's not, you know, 
a conscientious decision. We're not talking about a two of swords necessarily, right? So we're talking about, you know, when we talk about a life crossroads, it's not necessarily just a T-square in the sense that you only have left or right to go. When we're talking about a crossroads in life, there can be multiple paths that you're taking, but the path that you choose is, is taking you somewhere completely different, right? And there's certain paths that you can choose, but whichever one you choose, it's, it's going to be a major change. And so this is what we mean by the crossroads. So don't get, you know, don't get hung up on this idea of it only being sort of a two, a two path choice, right? There may be multiple paths, but in any case, the tarantula does not move or make its choice uh, for its path until it knows exactly which one it wants to choose. And so in this way, a lot of you Sagittarius most recently have probably been very patient, right? Have been extremely patient going through perhaps uh, the final steps of the stage that you're, or the path that you're on now. Um, but this week is going to be a turning point for you. And whichever way you finally decide to choose, it's going to be a no turning back, right? Strong energy, strong destiny energy, but destiny in your own hands, right? Now, camel energy is also a fire element. And the camel, the reason why I love the camel so much, and I'm sure you guys are going to love it very much, also is because the camel is the strongest animal spirit for independence and self-reliance. The camel doesn't rely on anyone. It doesn't need anyone. It's not needy. You know, the camel is absolutely self-reliant to the highest degree. It can go through long, long stretches of difficult terrain, hot terrain. It can deal with very difficult people who get hot very quickly, yet the camel remains calm. It doesn't get sort of knocked off of its path or sort of, you know, it doesn't react or it doesn't succumb to the outside influences. Everything the camel needs to survive, to carry on, is within it. And even when it needs to refresh itself and to revive itself, re-nourish itself, even that energy that it needs to draw on comes from within. You can see the blue crescent moon in the background that indicates the ability, the high intuitional ability for the camel a high level of sort of uh, extrasensory perception or just perception in the sense that um, anytime we see an animal that uh, is able to sort of navigate by moonlight alone, uh, the tiger is another one, uh, we're talking about an animal that trusts its intuition because to a certain degree you have to trust your, your intuition and your senses, right, in order to navigate such dark territory, right, where everything isn't so readily clear as it would be under the sun. Of course, the moon sheds some light, but still there's many, many shadows in the moonlight. And so you have to be strong. You have to be, you know, you have to have a bit of courage, right? And you also have to have a good connection with your intuition and knowing, even if you don't know the whole path laid out before you, to be able to intuit the path or feel the path. <laughs> Fucking strong animal card, Sagittarius. I, I'm not even going to hold you on that. All right, let's get your spread out this for this week. <clears throat> All right, your first spread. Fool, oh gosh, the fool, the tower, and the four of cups. Well, your readings never disappoint, Sagittarius. They're always heavy readings. The fool is what you resonate with. And oh my gosh, you know, like what else is there? Right, the fool and the tarantula, such strong energy. A lot of times people talk about the fool and they simply say, oh, something's starting new and you need a leap of faith. The fool is about taking a quantum leap in your experience, right? Yes, there's a certain amount of faith that needs to be applied because you're about to go on a new journey, but the really strong part of the fool is the fact that you've just learned a huge lesson uh, in an area of your life that you're just about to complete. You know, and you've made a huge quantum leap up. You know, when we learn things from experience, it's not a, something that we can measure linearly. You know, experience and the lessons and the wisdom we gain from experience is a quantum uh, increase, right? And when we talk about quantum, we talk about a whole sort of new level, right, on all areas. You know, a whole sort of new containment, a new baseline, everything. You know, when we have a quantum leap up, we have a new baseline to measure as well. That's how deeply and that's how uh, 
big the lesson is. And the reason why is because you're about to enter a completely different stage in your life because you've learned a life lesson. And a life lesson is a little bit different than just learning a lesson like when you're in relationships and you're learning like, you know, you may be learning to size people up, you know, because you've been through a th few relationships or you may be learning a few things about your own character. Yeah, these are little lessons along the way. But when we talk about the fool's journey, the fool is always going from uh, Zephyrah to Zephyrah on the tree of life. And so these are huge steps huge lessons, life lessons, lessons that teach you about multiple things at once. And this is you this week, Sagittarius, coming into something very new, bringing this energy in. And indeed you are starting a new path and a new journey. And it does require a little bit of leap, a leap of faith, but that isn't the only thing about the fool. And that is a hugely oversimplified uh, interpretation of the fool. Um, and so you're met with a tower. Now, the tower energy, that's quite interesting because this week something is going to change for you. It could be something you never expected to happen. And I feel like this may indeed be a relationship in a sense that it could be a relationship that you thought was perhaps an example would be. Now, it could be different, but an example would be, say, for instance, you were in a relationship that is done and dusted, right? Um... And you never thought you would see this person again, or perhaps you thought if you did see this person and if they spoke to you, maybe you would sort of like give in, you know what I mean? Or something like that. But this week, uh, say for instance, then your tower moment happens and you do see this person again. And you know what happens? You round off with a four of cups and you don't do what you thought you would. You don't respond the way you thought you would, you know? Um, I, I would say for some of you, you're coming into a new stage in your life. And, you know, if there was an ex in the past that you always said, if that ex came back, I'd always take them back, right? But this week, an example would be, say the ex comes back, you don't take them back. You don't. And everything you thought you would feel when you saw this person again isn't there. In fact, you're having a tower moment because what happened is you changed. You know, they left it so long. It could have been, a, you know, an example could be like, you know, if you broke up with somebody maybe a year ago, whatever, you said, look, you know, you better try and make this work. You're not going to get another chance. And they didn't believe you, you know, and now they're coming back. And the truth is you've learned so much. You've made such a huge quantum leap up in your experience and wisdom and understanding of yourself and your life that when they do finally come back, it's a huge tower moment in a sense that because it doesn't work, you say no. And they are shocked about it. Four of Cups comes in. They try to hand you a cup of love, Sagittarius, and you say no. You say too little, too late. It's done. You know? And that's your tower moment. And the tower moments can mean many things, but I think for you, uh, there's this is going to be a tower moment also for someone else as well in your life. But for you, I think the tower moment is very much the fact that you have really resonated so much higher and changed so much that you just don't succumb to the same shit you did before. And when they hand you this cup, you say absolutely not. Six of swords, five of swords, and the four of wands. There you go. So Six of Swords talks about a desire to journey towards harmony. Some of you Sagittarius have turned your back on turmoil, right? You have absolutely turned your back on the Five of Swords, right? So Six of Swords can mean moving. Some of you may be moving. You may be moving towns or cities. You may be moving jobs. Whatever the case may be, is you're changing your environment and you're changing yourself to firmly turn your back on a lot of sort of bickering strife, maybe some power dynamics that you were caught up in, some sort of, you know, uh, codependent relationships that you realized weren't good for you. And you say, you know what? Fuck this. And you turn around and you go. This week, you come right back up against this. Quite interesting. You're met with a five of swords and it's very much like, um, you know, they test you again. You know, there's a test. It may be the same uh people, environment, scenario, whatever that you've turned your back on, or it could be something different. It could be a different sort of power struggle, but you do come up against another power struggle this week, which is five of swords and you take the high road. 
Five of Swords is called the card for defeat, but it's a defeat in the sense that you're not willing to engage in this power dynamic anymore. You're not really willing to engage in this struggle with these individuals or this person anymore or these types of struggles anymore because you realize now the damage that they do. You realize that you're dealing with people who don't play fairly. Some of them may have dysfunction. And so it's the only way you can win or even battle somebody who is very sort of underhanded like this, right, and will use any means necessary, is to stoop to their level. And you refuse to do it, which is which reverberates very strongly back to this decision. So when you come up against this this week, for some of you, you say, no, I'm not interested. And you round the week up with a four of wands. And I think it's one of those situations like it's a test, right? In a lot of ways, you know, the universe will test you when you make your decisions. You know, this could go two ways, right? You could succumb to the dynamic that sucked you in before and start sort of, you know, and succumb to sort of pride and jealousy or things like that, right? Even anger and get caught up in this, right? And then you'll be right back into another codependent or toxic sort of dynamic, right? Or you can turn away from it you can throw your hands up and say, guess what? You win. I'd rather you have your hollow victory. I want to move on and I don't want to be like you and I don't want to be in these type of situations anymore. And if you take that road, which is the five of swords, ultimately, uh, the universe pays you with a new relationship. It, pay, it reaffirms you with a new relationship because it's like, look, you made the decision. Now you've been tested. You passed the test and here you go. We're going to make the way for an 11-11. Four of Wands, which is Venus and Aries energy. So it's definitely new love coming in. So it's very much, this is so strong, Sagittarius. This is very much tarantula energy, new love, 11 and 11. It's also vulture energy, right? Learning from the past, really putting that into play. All of this is sort of, sort of coming together. It's like a very perfect sort of, uh, set of circumstances for you to have a life-changing moment and a moment that is immediately reaffirmed with love, a strong love, right? A good, strong soulmate love, a new love, and a love that will probably change the rest of your life or at least change the next foreseeable future of your life with that tarantula energy. Strong, man, very strong. Three of Wands, Eight of Wands, Queen of Cups, again, uh, we have Three of Wands. So some of you are being forced to be really patient. Some of you are being forced to sort of stand still with a particular project. You want to move forward with it, but things happen this week and cause you to sort of have to stand still, take a look at the lay of the land. And that's what Three of Wands is all about. Uh, Three of Wands is the card for virtue and patience is a virtue, right? Uh, three is also the number for bonding and loyalty in a lot of ways. Three of Wands is a necessary step for you to make, to remain loyal to your objective, okay? A lot of times, Three of Wands also comes in at a time when we're being forced to slow down so that something else in our lives can come in. Uh, you know, life is about timing, right? And sometimes... You know, one thing has to be slowed down to let something else catch up or another situation has to be sped up so that it can catch up with somebody else. So again, like I said in the last spread, it's like everything is in a perfect position for a certain outcome. Sometimes to get everything in that perfect position, we're forced to be, uh, to stand still. You know, something happens that forces us to slow down, even though we're raring to go. And this is the energy that some of you are coming to the, into this week with. You're met with the eight of wands. A lot of sort of contact, right? A lot of contact. A lot of people are trying to get at you. A lot of people are uh, sort of... Eight is the number for boundaries and strength. But with the eight of wands, we talk about a lot of energies coming in that are sort of... Uh, overstepping boundaries, right? This can also indicate mixed messages, a chaotic amount of messages coming in or a chaotic amount of emotions coming in and the need to focus, the need to, you know, discern the shit from the real, you know, not everything coming in is worth paying attention to, but some things are, and this takes a lot of discipline, Sagittarius, this week when you're coming against this kind of energy. You round the week off with a queen of cups, and again, you round the week off with a feeling of wanting to hand your cup of love to somebody. Something about this, 
uh, put you in a position very much where you're feeling like, yeah, I'm ready to sort of hand my cup of love to this person or that person, right? Um, I want, I feel strongly for some of you Sagittarius, this may be a lot of different people who want to suitors, right? And my readings aren't gender specific, so it doesn't matter, but it seems to me that it's like, it almost feels like it's the end of the year and there may be one or two people, maybe even three different people who are all trying to get your attention. Um, but one of those people, right? One of the sort of wands out of all of this chaos is a real connection. Some of them is bullshit. Some of them is just, you know, nonsense, but one of them is a real connection. And it's going to de be depend on you paying attention, being, you know, getting to know each other, playful and all of that, but it's going to be down to you and your discernment to pick, you know, to see which one is the true love connection. But indeed, by the end of the week, some of you, I think you determine who it is. You determine through all the sort of chaos you find the connection and you are absolutely ready to open up to them with that queen of cups 10 of pentacles king of pentacles and the king of cups this is going to be the last one wow so some of you come into this week with absolute completion tarantula energy definitely uh, you raise up, you know, you raise up financially, you raise up with love. The 10 of pentacles is absolutely a combination really of pentacles and cups because 10 of pentacles, we talk about complete wealth, complete wealth also involves the wealth of love. And that is something that, that is a blessing. That is something that is an, a thing that we can consider a wealth, right? Um, and that's why we see with the Ten of Pentacles, we see family there. We see a good home life and the children and, and the sort of, so we're talking about that kind of abundance level that supports the family and supports a healthy family environment, but also the abundance of love that comes in. And so it's a complete picture, right? Um, <laughs> and this is where you're coming into this week. This is, this is the energy you're coming into this week with, and you're met with a King of Pentacles and you round off with a King of Cups. I'm going to say for some of you, again, you meet your perfect match, right? This is uh, because we're not talking about gender here, right? We're only talking about energies. Uh, we're talking about two alphas. So this could be alpha female, alpha male, alpha male, male, alpha female, female. It doesn't really matter, but these are two alphas. And Sagittarius, you are generally, depending on your chart or where your Sagittarius is placed, you can absolutely be an alpha person. Um, you meet your alpha king of pentacles, you round of the week with you in the king of cups position, meaning that you are very, very decided and focused on who or what you want. And that person is going to, my, my feelings, that person is going to be the king of pentacles. And so let me be clear, you know, either of you, you could be a female Sagittarius and this is your man, or you could be a male Sagittarius and this is your woman. Whatever the case may be, you're both alphas and you're both at the same level intellectually, uh, in terms of experience, in terms of vibe, in terms of, um, sort of your energy. Remember fire, uh, kings are always fire. So you're both extremely fiery individuals, right? And so this is why I mean, this is a perfect connection because in fact, these are two people who are in their, at their heart, very, very fiery, but they bring, they bring slightly different sort of aspects to it. Nevertheless, it's like you guys are Bonnie and Clyde, uh, and you meet and you know, and it's a beautiful connection, right? And it's a connection. I think that, um, is going to be very powerful, um, incredible. In fact, you know, this may, this is one of these strange kind of, um, once in, you know, once in a very great while connections, cause it's very, very difficult oftentimes. And that's why that three of wands showed up. Oftentimes it's very difficult to get everything aligned, to have two such powerful people come together. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it. This is, uh, December 29th to January 4th. Very strong reading for Sagittarius. What can I say? Um, Wow. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Go ahead and uh, check out your other readings in the description if you'd like. Um, please leave me a comment, like, share, share, uh, subscribe. All of that stuff helps me to grow my channel. Thank you so much, Sagittarius, for uh, watching my videos. And uh, for right now, I can say that this, is, this whole reading has really left me 
uh, feeling quite intense about it. This is going to be a great week for some, some of you. This is going to be a huge week of really life-changing events. And I wish you nothing but the best for the end of 2019 and for the beginning of 2020. Bye-bye now.